What do we got going on here? Oh, oh. Cool. Uh, we are at Top Golf in Vegas. It's a four layer, four level golf range with targets, food, drinks, pool. Uh, we're gonna give it a go. More, make sure. Yeah, this is harder this time though. I'm gonna hit you harder this time. Good, ready? ready? <laughs> I think you got some dome now. You got your head in the mug. 
Okay. I'm good. Thank Mark, you. your turn. Wait, let's, uh, yeah, you're so strong. He is like a superhero. <laughs> let's let's pose for a photo of sure. you two. Uh, yeah, there you go. You got it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I was only expecting to do this out walking out. Because everyone's I'm freaking out about like, what is all this American? This is supposed to be a safe zone. Carol, <laughs> he's done. Let's get a shower. Looks good, man. into the Kirtland venue this warm? No, oh, that was great. <laughs> now it's hot, which is beautiful. Curling in Vegas is a different animal. <laughs> this is the funniest of the people that are doing like Snapchat and video. Yeah. <laughs> How's that, Jules? <laughs> hey guys, my name is Brad. Thanks for making the trip down to Vegas to support us. We really appreciate it. I'm Mark. Thanks, guys. It's a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Brett. Nice to see everybody out here. I'm Jeff. Hopefully, everybody's having fun out there. I'm Tom, or you can call me the Water Boy. Yes, you're the guy who takes care of the fifth and breaks, Tommy. Are you going to get him in at all? Is he going to play at all, Brett? We're, we're going to have to play a little bit better for him to get <laughs> So we got we got to get a lead, but we've... Uh, We've only been able to do that once so far, so. So, what do you, you know, I've, we, I've watched you guys play for so many years, you know, and it's like you, you're coming into this one. First of all, the only first, per, the only person on the team that's actually been to Vegas before is Bart, right? So you guys came down to Vegas. What, okay, so you're up in, of all places, okay? You're, you're up winning the Briar, okay? And you're representing him. Then you find out you're going down and playing the Worlds. Not in some places got snow outside, or it's minus degree weather. It's Vegas. What was your first thought when all of a sudden you're going to Vegas? Anything during the entire tourney? Is that the is that the rule of the uh, of the team Newfoundland? Is that is that the rule for you guys? Not for me. Like I'm done. No, Tommy, you're you're drinking when you wake up in the morning, right? Okay, no. See, because it just it just doesn't seem right that the guys from the Rock just don't drink during the event. You know what I'm saying? Like personally, I saw your dad. <laughs> okay, uh, he, he doesn't have drinking for us. Yeah, uh, well done. <laughs> but. Uh, um, Wait, we'll have a beer or two uh, if we're out for dinner, but that's that's the extent of it. That's right? the extent. Yeah, we, we don't uh, we don't party. We don't do any of that stuff. We save it till the end, and hopefully it's a it's a you know winning celebration. Well, yeah, I mean, like seriously, let's go back here when you guys actually won the worlds last year. It was in Edmonton, right? And uh, and uh, in Edmonton, the funny thing is that. Uh, I was walking into the, the hotel, I think about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I look over and you guys are all sitting in where the bar is at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I think that party went to about 4 o'clock in the morning, did it not? Yeah, and you brought some Price Pubs uh, whiskey, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, I did. Costco, Costco, yeah, Costco whiskey. Costco whiskey. Yeah. Costco whiskey. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that was hard. That was, it was a little rough, I know. I had to, yeah, you know what the funny part the is? The plane ride the next day was not good. Yeah, I know, but we drank the entire bottle that night. That's cool. Because you kept inviting teams into the game, so. Yeah, we didn't even have any mix for that either. It no, no, we yeah. were just passing the jug around with that. It had a handle, I think it did, didn't it? Yeah. It's always worrying when you're drinking out of a bottle with a handle on it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good thing. But then all of a sudden, you come down here, and it's, this is a, a real interesting concept. I'm so kind of glad it was uh, it came down here. You guys mostly haven't had a chance to do the Continental Cup down here, but it's kind of fun to be able to be down in Vegas, have a, a great contingency, and, and seriously, look at all these people from Canada that came down to see you guys. And that's got to be cool. That's awesome. I mean, sir, what's your, what, sir, what was your feeling like, Brad, when you first when you first stepped in there and you you know you're in Vegas, and you got all these fans. You just, it's got to be a cool feeling, though. It, it is certainly, and, and we're we've been kind of spoiled over the last couple of years. We got to play the Briar in our hometown um, last year. We got to play the Worlds, and we're, we're the home team. Certainly in Regina, it felt like you know next to Saskatchewan when we were the home team. So uh, we're getting a little bit spoiled with it, and, it, and it's great to have the amount of support that we do, and, and we certainly appreciate it. And, 
Uh, we love playing in front of you guys and having you guys cheer for us. It's awesome. Well, let's actually, let's go back that way because a lot of people, how many people actually went to the prior and St. John's? I love going back to that because to me, it's almost like I was on the ice when it was all happening. And to me, it's almost like when, you know, Sid Crosby scores the overtime goal in the Olympics. The place just, I've never heard an arena get so jacked before in my life. You guys are on the ice. I mean, the clip that we use now is a, it's like almost like a, a rush clip at the end, at the beginning of the game, is when you guys hug and you just, it's just, tell me about that. What was it like to actually win the Briar on your own your own turf? Um, I, I think we actually have a picture of, of Brett after we won this year compared to last year. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's quite comical, but last year there's one word I just used to describe for it would be intense. Okay. Like, even the celebration was just intense and it was just, there was so much excitement, so much relief, so much anxiety in that moment that was just released. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that moment was memorable. And I'm not sure it's something we're ever going to be able to duplicate, but it was certainly special. And, and uh, like you said, that the roar in the crowd yeah. all week, but in particular on that shot, yeah. was just intense. It was uh, it was one of the most amazing things. I, I've done, that was my, this year was my 17th briar. Congratulations on winning this briar and coming down here. But I have to admit, of all the briars I've ever been to, that prior to me was one of the most amazing priors ever, just because you came in on your own turf and you did it the way you guys did it. So congratulations to you. Now you win this prior, this year's prior, now you're coming down here. Do you guys feel a little bit of pressure, like coming down and having to be the defending world champions, and especially coming down into the United States? Because really, you know, Schuster's team, they won the gold medal at the Olympics. I mean. Curling in the United States is catching on like wildfire down here. We're so happy about it. Uh, you're now defending champs. Do you feel like there's a target on your back to be able to do that, that, that they got to go out there and take people over? Jeff, what do you think? I don't think there's any more pressure. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we go into an event to uh, you know try to come out on top. But, you know, I think because we had a such successful Worlds last year in, in pretty dominating fashion, I think... A lot of the teams are, are really going to be gunning for us this year, and it, and it seems to be that way even uh, off the start here. Yeah, because you guys go went, you guys went clean last year, right? You guys didn't lose at all in the worlds. Is no. it better to lose that one game? Is it better to get that one game that out, and then just say, "Now I can settle in," or is it something that you want? It's like it's like throwing a no hitter. You know, you, you get into the last inning, it's it's like there's got a lot to be a lot of pressure on that. Is there more pressure with trying to go clean, or you'd prefer to maybe lose that one game early in the uh, round robin? I prefer to go undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers that question easy enough. I'll pick up Lincoln now. <laughs> we, we, we don't like losing, so... Uh, yeah, no, I, I got that. No, because I watch I've never seen your, your very intense team when your guys are on the ice. I mean, your work ethic's got to be great for this thing. Because I see you... Uh, I remember at the Briar, I guess there's one of the breaks. I'm walking behind stage, and you're walking back out because you had a little bit of a break. And one thing of Brad, Brad is very, very focused. Is that is it fair enough to say about you during a game? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. You walk by, you don't try and the talk to The understatement of the event. Right okay, now. okay, so well, Mark, here we go. Something interesting. Mark, how many years do you play with Brad? Too many. Okay, uh, perfect. That, I think that, it's 18. That's a perfect answer for the question I'm going to ask you right now. I want you to tell me something that nobody else knows about Brad. I gotta be real careful. I still gotta play the rest of the week with him. <laughs> How about an idiosyncrasy that we don't know about? Maybe you know. I'm you know, not even going there, Stu. Not. Oh, come on, like he wears teddy bear underwear or something like that. You know? Come on. There's, there's, you're not gonna divulge. You're, you're keeping the vault locked, are you? Okay, sorry you know, guys. You know what? You know what, Stu? He was, he's, he was really disappointed when uh, Celine Dion wasn't able to perform this week because he really wanted to go to his her show. Really? So he was he was devastated when. when so that's the, is that the big thing? I mean, he's better than Celine was playing. He came down. He's like, oh, I'm stoked. I'll go on the words. Will I get to see Celine? Yeah, that was really. That's kind of how it went. Uh, that's, <laughs> a, that's the first thing I did was look at tickets, and we were. De I was debating getting a really good ex good seat that was expensive, or maybe just going something mid range. So I didn't, I held off buying, and then finally I was going to buy that day, and then I got news that she canceled her shows. Yeah. I was heartbroken. <laughs> I am heartbroken. Well, you know, there's another hotel that actually has a Celine uh, look-alike sing-along thing. You can go to there. <laughs>